So, 2020 is finally over and it's now time to look into the future. And today I'm going to do exactly that. In the next few years Formula One will undergo some drastic rule changes and the driver lineups will be very different from what they are now. And today I'm going to try to predict what the F1 grid in 5 years time will look like. By the way, I think that all 10 teams will remain in F1 until at least 2025, however Alfa Romeo will more than likely leave Sauber, but we will still be left with 10 teams on the grid, and hopefully the signing of this guy will not lead to Haas going bankrupt. We say no to Mazepin by the way. Let's start off with the team that finished last in the constructor standings last year, Williams. Right now Williams are on a slow road to recovery, with George Russell at its core. However, given his situation, he won't stay at Williams for much longer. Instead, my first driver's pick is going to be Dan Tictum. Throughout the past year, Dan has really recovered his career, and given that he already has the Williams backing, a good second year in F2 would help him to get that seat. And he's certainly got the talent to retain it for the following years. My second driver is going to be Mercedes' protégé, Paul Aron. Yes, his Formula Renault season left a lot to be desired, but he has shown a lot of potential, especially with his performances in Italian F4. So yeah, Williams with Dan Tictum and Paul Aron. Next, we move on to Haas. Unfortunately, I don't think Mick is going to be able to carry the team on his own and will leave for bigger and better things in a few years' time. So instead, I've gone for Carlos Sainz. The speedy Spaniard will be one of the most experienced drivers in five years' time, and after being dumped by Ferrari, he'll stay in F1 with Haas. The second driver is going to be Dino Beganovic. The Swedish wonder kid has shown remarkable speed in his rookie season in Italian F4 this year, finishing third in the standings, and with Ferrari wanting to take care of their academy drivers, Haas's signing of Vaganovic would certainly appease them. So, in the end for Haas, we're going for Carlos Sainz Jr. and Dino Vaganovic. The next team on the list is Sauber F1. In five years' time, both Antonio Giovinazzi and especially Kimi Raikkonen won't be at Alfa Romeo slash Sauber anymore, with both of them retiring after 2022 at the very latest. The first driver for Sauber in my predictions is going to be Gabriele Mini. This year Mini became the champion of one of the most competitive Formula 4 series available, the Italian F4 Championship, as a rookie at 15 years of age. Contrary to popular belief, I don't think the Italian will join the FDA. Instead, I can see him playing his cart smartly by signing for the Zalba Junior team, which in the past few years has gained notoriety for looking after super talent Theo Porsche. The other driver, in my opinion, is going to be Spaniard David Vidales. Without any prior experience in single-seaters, Vidales made his debut in the Formula Renault Euro Cup last year, winning his first two races and finishing sixth in the Drivers' Championship. A switch to Prema in the Formula Regional Championship will only help this rising young star on his mission to reach F1. In conclusion, Sauber Motorsport will have Gabriele Mini and David Videles. Next, we're moving on to Scuderia Alfa Tauri. The team notorious for giving young drivers a chance in F1 will have a healthy collection of Red Bull Juniors to choose from, and both drivers who I'm predicting for an Alfa Tauri seat in 2025 have competed against each other in the same two championships last year, Jack Crawford and Johnny Edgar. Both are expected to be making their F3 debuts this year, and with similar levels of talent both could definitely end up in Formula 1. So, Crawford and Edgar at Alfa Tauri. Scuderia Ferrari are up next. Ferrari are not in a good place right now, and with Mattia Binotto at the helm they are going nowhere fast. Except for the circus, of course. But they've at least got Charles Leclerc tied down for a 5 year contract, so it's not all bad. He has shown his talent on a number of occasions, he just needs the car to back it up. We all know who the second driver is going to be. With his dad being an integral part in the history of Ferrari and Formula 1, it is none other than Mick Schumacher. This year's Formula 2 champion has shown that he is much more than just Michael's son, and is more than deserving of a step up to Formula 1 with Haas. It is a question of when, not if Mick will join the Scuderia in the future. Henceforth, the probable prediction is going to be Charles Leclerc and Mick Schumacher at Scuderia Ferrari. The rebranded Alpine squad is coming up next. Fernando Alonso will surely not stay on with the French team until 2025, whilst Esteban Ocon is sitting on borrowed time. He will be replaced by another Frenchman, Pierre Gasly. After the Frenchman's shot win at Monza, his stock has never been higher, and other strong performances have made Gasly a hot commodity on the driver market. 
and with Helmut Marko not wanting to promote the Frenchman again, he will surely be signed by Renault's successors. The other driver is another Frenchman, Théo Porcher. Porsche came into the public eye for his fantastic performances in F3, nearly winning the title in his rookie year. He is one of the top talents in motorsport right now, and it will only be a few years until he makes his Formula 1 debut. And with the right backing, he will turn out a fantastic driver. For Alpine Motorsport, it's Pierre Gasly and Théo Porsche. Next up is the new Aston Martin team. Aston Martin is back in F1 after more than 60 years of absence. Sebastian Vettel will join the team from 2021 onwards, however by 2025 he will have retired. And there is simply no way that Lance Stroll will leave the team. The Canadian is no doubt very gifted behind the wheel of an F1 car, and with his father owning the team, his seat is safe. My second pick is much more risky, however I can see it happening, and it's Robert Schwartzman. The Russian FDA member has showcased his talent multiple times. Not least in 2019 when he won the FIA Formula 3 Championship with Prema. Schwartzman has to be on it in F2 next year and he will have a realistic chance to get to F1 in 2022. However, given that Leclerc and Schumacher are Ferrari's golden boys for the future, I don't see any perspective there for Schwartzman. But Vettel's inevitable departure will leave a gap that Schwartzman will be happy to exploit. Aston Martin with Lance Stroll and Robert Schwartzman. Now it's time for McLaren. McLaren have certainly made huge strides recently, especially thanks to their team principal Andreas Seidel. And the signing of one of the best current drivers in Formula 1, Daniel Ricciardo, will certainly add to that. McLaren's protégé Lando Norris, one of the most talented drivers of his generation, should stay on with the team for a long time. If he can continue with the performances he has shown so far, he will turn out an amazing racing driver. And I think Daniel Ricciardo will add to that. Ricardo will act as a mentor to the young Brit and will help Norris realise his potential. And even though the Aussie will be 36 by the time 2025 rolls around, I don't see a reason why the McLaren lineup in five years' time couldn't still be Lando Norris and Daniel Ricardo. The penultimate team on the list is Red Bull Racing. I'm predicting a slow drop-off in performance from Red Bull over the next few years, especially due to Honda pulling manufacturer support at the end of 2021. And even though Perez has proven to be an exceptional driver, he will be usurped by the talent in the Red Bull Junior team. And Yuki Tsunoda is going to be the one replacing the Mexican. Even though Tsunoda's time in the feeder series was as short as the Japanese driver himself, he was able to demonstrate that he is one of the fastest drivers out there. Next year he will drive for Alpha Tauri in F1, and I think we will definitely see the F2 rookie champion in the senior team one day. And next to him is not Max Verstappen. Indeed, it is one of my favourite drivers. Dennis Hager. The Norwegian Red Bull Jr. dominated the Italian F4 Championship against the likes of Gianluca Petikov, and he even fought for the F4 ADAC title with Theo frickin' Porsche. He has just been announced for Prema in F3, and he will no doubt get to Formula 1. So for Red Bull Racing, it is Yuki Tsunoda and Dennis Hager. Finally, Mercedes. Sir Lewis Hamilton will win a few more races, get a couple more championships and live the dream of every Formula 1 fan. Meanwhile Valtteri Bottas will be replaced by George Russell. I'm just going to play you this clip. If you've paid attention so far throughout the video, you won't be shocked by who is coming up next. It is of course, Max Verstappen. Without a car that can battle for the championship, Max is going to grow frustrated with Red Bull, and Mercedes would surely be the logical option for one-off, if not the best driver on the current grid. In the end, Mercedes with George Russell and Max Verstappen. So yeah, what do you guys think uh, of my predictions? Uh, comment down below what are your thoughts on my driver picks. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I've been Alex. Bye.